Verse 408 When one, depending upon the mind, recognizes an external world, error is produced. Error takes place from these two causes and there is no third cause. In the previous video, in the previous verse, I spoke about this magnetic field that we're clamped within, that we're stuck within. This is our samsara, our dukkha, our suffering. And this verse described the nature of the trap that we're stuck in. And it's fueled by one fundamental assumption and that is the existence of the external world I suppose if you're just jumping into these videos and you've happened to hit this one it might seem rather ludicrous where I'm going where I might be going with this but if you've been around for a while and I've heard a few of these videos and hopefully you're coming along for the ride and the notion of questioning the existence of an external world isn't so ludicrous after all And I should be quite clear here that what's meant by external is not only the whole of the physical world, but it's the world of our thoughts and imagination. These all belong to the external world. Because this clamp exists within the external world and it's within a particular dynamic. It's within that aspect which we might, we might normally call internal, in other words, the world of our thoughts, of our imagination, of our moods, and what's going on in the physical world. So this clamp that we're stuck in is an external clamp It is something which forgets our true nature. And this forgetting our true nature is what's described in this verse as error being produced. And we're told that this error takes place from these two causes and there is no third cause. So we could understand this as the mind recognizing an external world. These are the two causes. But this is what was spelled out in further detail in the previous verse. The mind here is what's called the paracalpita. And this is the habit pattern, the habit energy of our moods. And the external world are those aspects of what's going on that our moods relate to and which are used to fuel the moods. And this is it. There is no third cause. This is the situation. We're caught up in this dynamic. this dynamic of an external world which demands our attention and our attention relating to it in accordance with a particular pattern of moods. That pattern of moods is what constitutes you, me and everybody else. Little vortices of moods which suck in awareness 
I miss the bigger picture. So there's one issue you might be getting a little impatient with, and that is questioning of the assumption of an external world. But I'm afraid this video is addressed to those who are okay with this. If you're not okay with this, then it's something you have to look into yourself. It's something which has been explored in many previous videos. And given that we are at verse 408, it's one of those things that we no longer need to justify. So we're looking into this, we're looking into the nature of our situation and understanding it as clearly as possible, seeing into it as clearly as possible. Because once we see into it, once we see into how we are driven by our moods and how this determines our understanding of a world that we relate to, well, once we see into it, we can begin to free ourselves from it. This seeing into it is the beginning of freedom. And I said earlier on that we are these little vortices of moods which awareness gets sucked into. Well, these little vortices of moods exist within the sea of awareness. And this is what we can come back to. Awareness can come back to itself. 409 takes this further. Depending on that, and from that cause, error is produced. The six Indriyas, the twelve Ayatanas, the eighteen Datus, are thus said by me to be of the mind. Now mind here is spelt with a capital M. I'm going to assume that's an error, otherwise it would say are thus said by me to be of mind. But mind with a small m is a source of error. So this assumption that there's an external world comes along with the notion that there must be a means of experiencing that external world. And these are the six senses. The six senses are the five are the five senses which experience the physical world and the sixth sense is the mind itself which experiences mental objects. So as I said, they're all external. Thoughts, mentality and physicality are all external. And the twelve ayatanas, the ayatanas are what the senses pick up on or what they can sense. So the eyes sense physical objects, the ears sense sounds, the mind senses thoughts and so on. And apparently the word ayatana is a Sanskrit word, it means the gate of coming into existence. So again this is the gate by which a notion of an external world is reinforced. And the 18 datus, datus are sometimes called element. So again, these are the elements of existence. The 18 elements are the 12 ayatanas plus the six consciousnesses. So basically the datus include the senses, the object, the sense objects, and awareness of each of these sense objects. So the difference, so the difference between our eye and a camera is this third factor of consciousness, 
being aware that we're seeing a sense object. So this system of the 18 datus is an elaboration of the original error. I didn't really want to address the issue of why there's no external world. But one question I, I have to put to you, if this is a problem, is what are these sense objects being presented to? Is it another part of the external world? Or is it something outside of that framework? It's like the consciousness of the dreamer. In a dream, everything is going on. There's space, there's time, there are other people, there are objects, natural objects, artificially constructed objects, it's all there in a dream. And yet, who is that dream happening to? What is that dream happening to? Is that dream happening to somebody inside the dream? Or is it happening to something else altogether? So this is what we can ask ourselves. What is existence happening to? Well, I'll tell you the answer. It's happening to awareness. And if we can start relating to this awareness, to what everything is happening to, rather than all the things that are happening, well then, this is enlightenment practice, because this awareness is enlightenment. So verse 410 says, when it is understood that things are because of the combination of self-deeds and an external world, the ego attachment is abandoned. So the combination of self-seeds is our own particular mood pattern. And we're relating this to an external world. So when we can see this, when we can see this, when we can see that we're caught between these two clamps, the clamp of our moods and the clamp of the belief that there's something out there, all these things which are happening, This is the ego. The ego is the sum total of our moods. And the thing is, as I've said before, our mood patterns are usually quite painful, and yet we reinforce them. It's like addictive behavior. We don't enjoy it. Consequences are painful, and yet we constantly indulge it. So if we can move, make that very, very subtle but definite shift from all the things that, that are going on towards that which all these things are happening to, then we've gone beyond the ego. We're coming back to awareness because all these things are happening to awareness. Awareness gets sucked into them. It gets sucked in to this magnetic field which is clamped between the pattern of our moods and the belief in the external world. So we come back to awareness, come back to our sense of being. And come, come back to it in a certain spirit. Don't bring any of these moods with you. We need to come back to it in a spirit of loving acceptance, of loving embrace. We 
these moods, these ego attachments. will cling on to the last. So we need this loving acceptance which is unconditional. It's an openness, a spaciousness. It's freedom from any kind of clamp. The ego attachment is abandoned. We no longer put our energy into reinforcing our moods. We are open, relaxed, loving and free. <laughs>